They are not kids of 20 years old who still think about their girlfriend. They are strategically positioned in this church. In time, it can pass unnoticed. We have a lot of intercessors here who are doing an amazing job. But God just put these three on my heart today. I want to bless them for their faithfulness. And I want to bless them with another portion of anointing. That they may begin to see and to know and pray precisely. So we can fulfill quicker what God has for each one of you in this church. They will begin now to pray without ceasing for each member of the congregation. For your children. They will begin. You know them, you don't know them, they will be praying for you. The prayers of the grandmother and the mothers cannot be interrupted. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hold hand like that together. Father, stretch your hand to them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for vessels, intercessors, those who wrestle with you in the night time, in the secret place, to remove the obstacles. and we bless them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth strengthen their bodies in the name of Jesus activate the domain gift within them thank you for an activation of the gift of seers that they may pray precisely father thank you for a fresh anointing to move the family of the church to the path of destiny to fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ they will wrestle against demonic powers and they will establish the will of the Father in this land, in this city, in our communities, in our churches, in our families, in our children's lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive a double portion of anointing as it was upon the prophet Elijah and it was upon Moses and it was upon the apostle Paul. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you and we are grateful for life. In Jesus' name. All the intercessors who go to Tuesday intercession, come here. You go to Tuesday intercession, come and join. Come. Prophetess and prophet, come. Bring your team here. Everybody come. Stand here. Do a lineup. All the mighty warriors, let's put our hand together for these people as they are coming. Thank you, Lord. If you, if you are a part of the intercession team, I want you to come. Don't be shy. Intercessors like to hide. Don't hide this time. We are calling you for... Can we begin to pray, church? Bagaya ndala gada gaya bagaya. Shende ke koto kote makata ya kata. Rada ke kele kele koko so koto koto. Kata kaya kata ya kata. Randa gaya ya hold hands. Ronde ke te kaya bara bagaya bara baba hold hands. Hold hands. Banda ya raba baba ya kata kaya bagaya. Hold hands. Kaya kata kaya kata. Roto koto koto koto. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Go soto lo mande de de baba. Kaya kaya rara kaya kaya baba. Shake the koto. Ta 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 
Church, I want you to hear my voice. You know these people, they stand for the church. And sometimes the devil is not happy, he will attack them. I know it. The devil attacked the people who resist his work. He attacked the people who advance the work of God. I want you to know they stand for you and your children every Tuesday. You don't even know about it. You just see the preachers on the stage. But the warfare is settled in the secret places. Every Tuesday they come here. Upstairs in the children's side. Pumping. Releasing the battle cry. Standing for you and I. For your children. For your mind. For your next job. For the struggle you're fighting. They fight it for you. You don't know about it. Because on Sunday you don't see them on the stage. I am grateful for this woman and man who stand in the gap. And today I want to bless you. Today I want we bless you. I want the church bless them in signs of gratitude. To say thank you. We didn't even know but you prayed for us. I would have lost my mind. Probably your prayer saved me from losing my head. Probably your prayer saved me from that accident. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's clap hands for God for their lives. For every prayer they pray. For every release. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing of the Lord upon each one. That the mind and the body may feel refreshed. Thank you, Jesus. They stood in the gap for this house and for the people of this house. Faithfully. And today, I pray, Lord, that you may remember them. Remember their families. Remember their own children. Even their own struggle. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, let it be uplifted from their shoulders. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Strengthen them with revelation knowledge. Open their eyes to see more clearly. Thank you for the gift of knowing. Awaken within them another level. Mando Thank you, Jesus. Let the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrows be bestowed upon each one of them and their families. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. I say everybody shout amen. Can we give a great amen? Is that your loudest amen? Louder. I say louder. Thank you, Jesus. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. We're going to get you back here soon. Thank you, Brother Jeff, for bringing forth this Holy Ghost led praying for Ray and his family, faithful people. You really need to have a true knowledge with Christ and believe in what God is doing in this house. Thank you, Jesus. I feel so moved in my spirit. I have too much words in me, but I will share the word first, and then we're going to pray. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Today, I would like to speak. This one, I can talk about without ceasing. Just like God said to pray without ceasing, this subject, I will talk about it without ceasing. Because I have to say, without that grace, I don't think I will still be in my right mind. It is, it is this, this what I'm going to talk about. That's what kept me. And without that grace, this church where it is today will not be there too. I just have to tell you. And this grace is available for every child of God. Amen. Many of you operate in it, but at a superficial level. And many of you operate in it, but you don't understand it. That's why I would like to entitle my service today. It's not just a dream. It's not just a dream. Somebody help me say that. It's not just a dream. 
It can be just a dream. It has to be more than just a dream. We are in the last days, and you all testify of it. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Let's read scripture right away to back up and put a platform for us to preach. And And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. Somebody say, it's not just a dream. Say it again. I want you to say it just about dreams. I will leave prophecy and vision. But I would like to announce to you that the last day's language of God is prophecy, vision, and dream. I will repeat it again. The last day's language of God to the New Testament church, you and I, is vision. I will spare you the two. I will talk about dreams. This teaching I draw it from my school of prophets called the Dream Master. When I talk about this, I feel so stirred up because without this grace, I will not be here. Yet many people wake up from their dreams and they say, it's just, just a dream. It just, I ate too much pizza. This is a pizza dream. <laughs> I don't understand it. it I, I just have a dream. From today, you will not have just a dream. Because you will understand the dream is God's thought to mankind. How can God give you his thought and you will dare to say it is just a dream? Do you know what the angel has to fight through to get to you? Many people in this house, if you have honored your dream, you will have less scars. But it's just a dream. Of course, there is three dimensions of dreams. The dream that comes from you because of busyness, the dream that comes from the devil, and the dream that comes from God. I will not cover such, but I will, I will stick here in my subject of dreams. I'm a dreamer. I'm like Joseph. I dream sometimes three, four, five dreams a night. I'm a dreamer. And my dreams are not black and white. They are color. 3D. No, no, you didn't catch me. LED dreams. Pure color, pure LED. Three dimension. You know the curve like that? The, 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 the three dimension. They say my dream. It's not just a dream. It's God's thought. Dreams are spiritual monitors. A dream is like a screen that reveals to you your condition or what is happening in the spiritual realm. <laughs> the God dream is powerful. If God did not speak to me in dream, I would have lost my head. Because I would have made too many mistakes. And even the mistake I made, mostly is because I didn't listen to the dream. Just like many of you sitting here. You married the wrong guy and then you divorced just because you didn't listen to the dream. Amanda Rabagaya. You connected with the wrong girlfriend and then you get hurt or the wrong boyfriend. You, you did not listen to the dream. You invested your money in the wrong place just because you didn't listen to the dream. You convinced yourself, oh no, it's just a dream. God can talk also in different ways. I done it too. From today, I say from today, I say from today, you will sleep with a pen and a paper by your bedside. Nanda Bagaya. Are you hearing me, somebody? Am I been to the wrong church today? I say you will not go to bed without a pen and a paper because God is about to reveal to you revolutionary ideas. Oh, somebody said, so these dream stories create too much problem. Of course. 
Everything that's God, human, humankind, just turn it into big problems. But you can't throw the baby with the bathwater. Are you hearing me? Because of unfortunate situations and lack of wisdom in so many people, now we don't believe in dream anymore. You don't believe in dream? It's like saying, I don't want to hear God. Listen to me. I am so excited. The Holy Ghost came upon me and I kneeled down and I cried for 30 minutes. I said, when I finish to cry really well, you know, you feel good when you finish to cry properly. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You cry until you feel good. Ah, it was good to cry. <laughs> and then you want to go to bed now and you have dreams. <laughs> there is a secret that you are looking for right now. And you don't find it anywhere. God can reveal it to you in dreams. That a man was weak. Yeah. Daniel 2.19. <laughs> Somebody's going to have good sleep today. Yeah. That night. Which night was it? That night? What is that night? Tonight. What is that night? No, help me preach, please. What is that night? Tonight. The secret will be revealed. <laughs> hey! God revealed the secret to Daniel not in the library or on Google. He was having a sleep. There are some secrets you can't get them until you sleep. At one time of my life, I was sleeping so few hours. And then one day, God spoke to me in a dream. And he said, you need to sleep more so I can talk to you more. If you didn't have a reason to sleep, now you have a reason to sleep. Yeah. And for you people who have been sleeping too much, stop sleeping too much, all right? I'm talking about these people who don't sleep a lot. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And every time he had a dream, he tell it to his magician and they give him the interpretation. This time, though, he had a dream, and he didn't remember the dream. But the king cannot say, I don't remember the dream. So the king said, you need to tell me what I dreamt. <laughs> then interpret it. Somebody say, another level. <laughs> ah, my God. We are confronted with problem of level five, six, seven. You cannot dream at level one to solve a problem of level five. It's not possible. You have to go deeper. So all the magicians say, if you guys do not tell me what I dreamt, it's good to be a king because your word is law. If you don't do it, I kill you. They all went charlatan, calling open their gods, nothing. And Daniel heard that. And Daniel said, Go tell the king, give me time. I will pray and I will sleep. <laughs> I love Daniel. He said, I pray and I sleep. Daniel now dreamed the dream of the king. Number one. So Daniel dreamed the dream that the king dreamed that the king did not remember. Number one. Number two, he dreamed the interpretation in the dream. He's too dangerous, this boy. Why? Because he used his time for two things. Pray and sleep. And he said, my Lord, here is what you dreamt. And here is what it means. We are in a season today. If we have to confront the challenges of life at the same time as the unbelievers, they will have the upper hand on us. I refuse to live in that level. Because God wants to reveal to you things before it happens. Amos 3.7 said, I do nothing in the earth 
until I reveal it to my servant, the prophets, or to the prophetic people. So how come we always stumble in the night like everybody else? How come when they are firing people at work, you find out you are getting fired like everybody else? How come you didn't know about that so you can throw your resume elsewhere quickly? When there is a God, Daniel, put Daniel back. When there is a God that reveals secrets, somebody says secret. secret. If it's secret, that means it was not known in the earth. It's time we begin to know things in heaven before they manifest in the earth so we can have the upper hand and position ourselves accordingly. Put Daniel 2.19, please. He revealed what? That night, the secret was revealed to you. The key of success is who's going to break the secret code first. You have to know where the market is moving before it moves. <laughs> you have to know that the devil is going to attack your marriage before it attack. How come you don't know? Pray and sleep. God reveals secret in the vision night of the night. Psalm 16, 7. Psalm 16, 7. Today your faith will grow to such a level, amen. you will join the category of the dream masters. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. I will bless the Lord who guide me every, even at night my heart instruct me. He said, David said, if I was not having instruction at night, I will not feel guided. A lot of people are confused, just stumbling left and right, you know, whatever will be, will be, we are at the mercy of surprises and destiny. No, 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 no. We can't live that life like that. I refuse to live that life because Act 217 say I will dream. The Spirit of God is poured out upon me. I talked to a gentleman and he said, me, I never dream. I said, of course, you dream, but you don't remember your dream because the devil has crushed your spiritual monitor. You need deliverance. Anybody sitting here who say, I don't dream, you need deliverance. I'm just being blunt with you. Yeah, there is a demonic interference in your life because it's the language of God to speak to his people in prophecy, dreams, and visions. So how come you don't dream? Or somebody say, I dream but I never for remember. Of course, because you need deliverance. Okay. Amen. I'll leave that alone. Are you hearing me? Yes. Psalm 16, 7. It says, I will bless the Lord what? You can save a lot of money running after counselors. God can counsel you in your dream. Oh, he did that so much to me. Sometimes he rebuked me. Sometimes he counseled me. Sometimes he tell me, don't do this. If not, this is going to happen. Be careful. This, if you take the step right, this is where you're going to fall. I'm telling you very clearly. I don't wake up from my dream and ask him for interpretation. Because they are color 3D. God won't speak to you in dream if you don't honor it. Ask and it shall be given to you. Oh, no, no, this is just nonsense. Everybody dream. Of course everybody dream. Not all dream are godly, but they are dreams that are godly. So you throw everything together? He then spoke to Muslims and spoke to pagans like Nebuchadnezzar, Abimelech, Pharaoh, to warn them. Dreams will warn you. Amen. Dream will say, don't touch that boy. Oh, yeah, but you know, when you wake up in real life, he's so cute and so beautiful. But in your dream, he looks like uh, Jackie Chan in the negative. You understand? He's violent, breaking everything, fighting you. Or you see him hanging around with other girls, running after girls, uh, kissing other girls. You wake up from the dream, you say, oh, my God, I just had this dream. I think God is speaking to me to drop this man. And then in real day, 
hello baby, yes, you know, I miss you so much. And then, because in the natural now, he act opposite to what you saw at night, then now you feel like, no, no, this was just a dream. It's not just a dream, especially when it's repeated. Here we are, Job 33. Let it hit the centerpiece now. Job 33. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 14. Indeed, God speak once or twice, yet no one what? Let's read that together, please. One, two, three. Indeed, God speaks once or twice, yet no one notices it. When Job is speaking, he's not talking about God speak through the word or through the preaching. No. Verse 15, you will see. Now he tells you how God speak once and he speak twice and then they don't get it. He tells you where? In a dream. A vision of the night when sound sleep fall on men while they slumber in the bed. Stop there. He said, God speak once or twice, yet no one notices it. Then he tell you, he's not talking about the preaching on the pulpit. Not your reading of your Bible. He tells you now, where God speak one twice and they don't notice. He said, in the dream, in the night vision, when deep sleep fall upon men and they slumber in their bed, that's where God come and he speak once or even twice. But they don't get it. In the dream master, I have a curriculum there that I teach you how to interpret any dream. Somebody said, how oh, can that be possible? Dream is a language. You can teach me Spanish. And I can be fluent in Spanish. You can begin to be fluent in dream interpretation. That is the language of God. Amen. I was in uh, Bujumbura, and I was talking to this gentleman, and he said, how can you say it that you can interpret in dream? Is it not by the Spirit? I said, of course, it's by the Spirit. But the Spirit gave wisdom to understand this language. And he began to enter a debate with me. So I told him, when is the last time you had a dream? He said it was just a few days ago. I said, okay, what did you dream? Did you understand it? Oh, yeah, of course. I woke up from the dream. I get it. I got it. I said, okay, tell me the dream. He said, I dream people were chasing after me with machetes. Wherever I go, they follow me. I go down, they go down. I go up, they go up. I go through the mountain, they go. I mean, I was looking, I was like a fugitive running. I said, oh God, you need to save me. And finally, hallelujah, I got by this water and then I saw a crocodile pop out. I jumped and I went on the back of the crocodile and the crocodile just escaped smoothly with me. And these people, they couldn't catch me anymore. And I woke up and I said, Lord, thank you. Because they were defeated in the water. They could not cross the water. I said to him, now do you want to know what this dream means? <laughs> he said, I understand it. You know, I had problem in real life. But this problem is no longer. I escaped the problem. I said, bravo. So you're happy? He said, yeah. Now I say, I'm going to tell you what the dream means. <laughs> are, you, are you ready to hear what the dream means? Yes. Good. In dream wisdom interpretation, whenever you dream of a lizard or a snake or a crocodile, it's a demonic entity. So I just told him, you escape one problem to a bigger one. Watch. <laughs> oh, pray for me, pray for me. I said, okay, pray for you. And he subscribed to the, to the school. You have to subscribe to the school. I mean, after you are happy, the devil was about to eat you up. You jump from one problem to a worse problem. To a bigger problem. This guy was just sitting after you on ground. Somebody say ground. Ground is the domain of mankind, not water. Even in your own domain, you are, as you are running. Now, you are stepping into a domain that is not a man's domain. domain. That is what? The water. On the back of the most dangerous demonic entity of the water, the crocodile. You escape one problem... You just jump in the bigger one, my friend, and you need deliverance. Don't 
play with dreams. You can't say, you know, it's just a dream. God is warning you. Can I tell you this? Having a dream is not spiritual. When somebody dream a lot, doesn't mean it's spiritual. Because God didn't speak to unbelievers in dreams. What makes you spiritual is when you understand the interpretation. <laughs> you know, having a dream and not get it is like receiving a letter and you never open the envelope. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody? Please go back to the scripture all the time. Leave those scriptures there. In a dream, a vision of the night, when sun sleep, fall upon men, when they slumber in their bed. Verse 16. Then he opened the ears of the men and sealed their instruction. Now, in the NLT, that's the version I like in, in this portion. In the NLT, he opened their ears and he put in his instructions. So when you sleep in a deep sleep, God opened your ears and begin to give you instruction. Somebody say instruction. 17. He whispered in the ears. Aha! Here is the vision. He whispered in the ears and terrifies them with warnings. It goes like that. Son, be careful. Today, don't go on dear foot. At 4 p.m., there's a truck that will cross some cars there. My daughter, be careful. This Kunta Kunta you're hanging out going for coffee <laughs> is a snake. Oh, Warning! He whispers in your ears, terrifies you with warning. He tells you if you keep going the way you go, here's what's going to happen to you and it's dangerous. Next. He makes them turn from wrongdoing. And he keep them from pride. Amen. When is he doing all these things? In what? Everybody in what? Say it again in what? In what? Say my dream. In what? In what? Take your dream. Say it in what? Number 18. He protects them from the grave. I remember years ago, I came from the interior of the country in the Ivory Coast. We entered in Abidjan as a capital. And just the first stop, I felt compelled I need to step out of the bus. It didn't make sense because I have to go to the terminal where my ride is. My ride is there. I found myself walking out of it. You know why I walk out? Because the night before I take the bus, I saw that if I pass this stop, suddenly my life was stopping. I saw the computer like that, born in 1968, till that day, and then it became all black. And then I saw the stop. So when we get to the stop, I begin to hesitate. Should I go out? I should not go out. I was not even a Christian. I remember this dream, and dread came upon me. Fierce! The fear overwhelmed me so much, I found myself down from the bus. And when the bus was going, I said, no, 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 I need, stop, 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 I need to go back in the bus. But they were gone. I got home. It took me three hours to get home. On the news, if you're Ivorian, you know this place, it's called the Banco, or Banco. This bus just crashed in the river. Everybody died. In a night dream, God warns you. That he will protect you from the grave, from crossing the river of death. Amen. Oh, it's just a dream. Just a dream. That is the prophetic language. It's given to you through vision and dreams. I refuse to say it's just a dream. It cannot just be a dream. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it say when deep sleep come on you, you know what? A lot of people in this country don't sleep because of anxiety. Yeah. 
And you know what the devil does that for? So that God does not open your ears to put in your, his instructions. Because when you don't sleep and you don't have the time to sleep, this dream stuff doesn't exist for you. So the devil is stealing from you by keeping you not sleeping. Are you getting me? Yes. I, I say, you getting me? Yes. Today in the name of Jesus, you will sleep. Amen. I say you will sleep. Amen. One third of your life is sleeping. I refuse to use one third of my life in number one, if you're 60 years old, that means 20 of these 60 years old was just dedicated to sleep. How can you waste that without hearing the thoughts of God? I just give you another reason why you should sleep. Not just so you can be sharp at work tomorrow. No, no, no. That's a byproduct. You need to understand that God speaks once or twice. Men don't conceive and understand it. Yet in the night, when a deep slumber come upon you, he opened your ears that he may give you his instruction about your tomorrow. When you begin to operate in the realm and the stream of dream master, few things will surprise you in life. Very few things. My wife and I, we dream so much that at one time we take it for granted. I have to say, it, when I begin to teach on the dream master, I had to repent. I said, God, forgive me. As I'm speaking to you, I told my wife, follow this service online today. We need to repent for all the thoughts of God we took for granted and threw aside. God doesn't lie. He spoke to you that he will use you to do such and such. He will do it, but you have to honor that he spoke to you. In your dream, God will give you divine intelligence. In your dream, God will impart wisdom to you. You remember Solomon? King Solomon? Wise man Solomon. Do you know where he got his wisdom? From Grob, am I right? Through which venue? Through which venue? Solomon never had an elder lay hand on him and said, according to God, receive wisdom. Not in real life. Solomon received his wisdom in a dream. He went to bed dummy. He woke up wise. Mando go bagaya gaya. I say your Solomon dream is coming. Your Solomon dream is coming. Your Solomon dream is coming. He went to bed ignorant. He woke up dangerous. And he didn't go to school for that. He just had a dream. And God came and imputed to him wisdom in, in the dream. In the dream. Solomon became the wisest man on the earth. Just because of a dream visitation. God visit me again. Visit me again. It's not just a dream. When you enter in the dream master stream, you become to be a custodian of God's secrets. You begin to know what others don't know. Thank you, Jesus. It unveiled the mind of God, revealed the thoughts of God to you. We are a dreaming generation without shame. I expect God to speak to me every night I go to bed. I expect it. I'm not saying I'm just going to in case. No, I expect. I put a demand on him. I say, God, I'm a human being. And sometimes my flesh and my mind can prevent me to even understand certain things in real life. I know, God, I'm limited. 
And sometimes my limitation and my flesh and my humanity can prevent you to speak to me face to face. But when I sleep and my pride goes to sleep and my intellect goes to sleep and my flesh goes to sleep, My spirit never sleeps. My pride slept. My ego goes to sleep. My humanity goes to sleep. My carnality goes to sleep. My flesh goes to sleep. Then, God opened my ears. I say, Lord, I recognize my humanity. And you can be limited to speak to me because of my carnality, my humanity, my limitation, my pride, my ego. But when I sleep, and it all goes to sleep, and my spirit is awake, visit me. Visit me. Visit me. Visit me. Speak to me. Open my ears. Instruct me. Direct me. Guide me. It's not just a dream. Let me tell you. Legendary inventor. I love this man, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is the father of great landmark inventions that you and I we are using today. You don't even know it comes from him. Your recorder player. These bulbs, the light bulbs, The electrical grid. All those stuff you can't do without today. The movie you watch, motion picture. Thomas Edison was an American, born in 1848, if I don't mistake. This guy was such a genius that they call him the wizard. The wizard. On his account, he has 1,093 patents. That's a brain. That's a brain. 1,093 USA patents of inventions. 1,000, brother. I'm just saying one. 1,093. They call him the wizard. You know, Thomas Edison has his revelation because he always took a nap after he prayed. When he's struggling to discover something and he's stuck somewhere, he knows there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. This light did not come by the brain of human being. These lights, they were created, patterned by Thomas Edison because of a dream in the night vision. God show him. Hi, hi, hi. How many people use the internet? <laughs> no, no, seriously. Everybody uses internet, don't you? Lepage is this boy. You know the, the Google search engine? You know that bar, the Google search on the bar, you write, tick, 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 and then it brings you wherever you want. You can put Tombuktu, bah! It, it bring the link to Tombuktu to the internet and bring you back the information on Tombuktu. This boy, 1996, had a dream from God. And God revealed to him about the internet. And he woke up. In the dream, he believed he can take the internet and put it on every individual computer. In the dream, he realized it's not possible because the hard drive of the computer cannot handle all that humongous information data. God gave him a strategy or to create a link. And from a link, you can gather the internet information on your cell phone or now on your computer or now on your cell phone. In the dream. Somebody say it was in the dream. He went to be a broke student to a millionaire. Somebody said there are still dreams like that. Tell your neighbor there are still dreams like that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We all studied that at school, the law of relativity from Einstein. Oh, you know how Einstein got that? As a teenager, through a dream. Einstein, 
I'm time sat in a farm with a lot of cows. He saw the cows all line up on the fence, and it was an electrical fence. Big cows like that, like Alberta cows. And the owner of the field was facing the cows on the other side, outside of the fence. Him, he was in the fence, looking at the cows from the back. And then he saw the owner of the electrical uh, of the farm went and put on the electrical fence on. Bah! From Einstein's side, all the cows were electrocuted at the same time, and they did the same movement. So they, all the cows jumped backward together. In unison, same moment, same time. And he walked in the dream to the owner of the farm and said, I saw all the cows jump together on the fence. And the owner said, no, I didn't see it that way. I was standing on this side, and I saw all the cows jumping away from the fence one after the other, synchronized. So this one jumped, and this one jumped, and this one jumped. The one on the other side did not jump until this one jumped, then this one jumped. Just like a, how do you call that? A domino effect. Einstein received the law of relativity by the light that come to your eye that make you notice depending on where your position. In a dream! You see these clubs? The guy who invented the sewing machine. You know, that was old one. Butterfly or whatever. The guy created a machine and he was stuck not knowing how the needle can come in and go back again. For years, he has a half invention, but it was not complete. And one day in the night vision, he had a dream. And he saw some people with some spears like in the jungle somewhere. And then they told him, you started an invention. You have to finish it in the dream, in the dream. The guy tried to fix it. He couldn't. They said, okay, we're going to kill you now. So they take the spear, throw the spear to kill him. And the spear come toward the guy. He looked at the spears and he saw a hole in the tip of the spear. And he woke up. That was the secret of the sewing machine. You have to put a hole in the tip of the needle. There is a God that reveals secret in the night time. And that could be for you. No, I don't dream. It's just a dream. I can keep going on with invention. After invention that have been created, coming from God, just through dreams. When I was at school, I hated chemistry. I was not very good at chemistry. Really. You too? Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I didn't like these stories of chemistry. I feel like this is for women because like cooking. That's the way I used to think. Too much mix this solution with this solution and then mix this solution. We are not cooking here. <laughs> I was an arrogant boy. Here is the point. You all know Mendeleev, the Russian chemist who created the table of the elements. You know that? Do you know where he got that? In a dream, Mendeleev's eyes were open and he saw all the different elements falling into classes and into the table. Before him. That's the way he find out about classification of the different atomic elements. In a dream. But yet you are here. We are sleeping one third of our life. It is time to have dream that can change nation. Dream that can change a community. Dream that can change a people. Dream that can change families. Revolutionize business. Hallelujah, somebody. If not, don't sleep now. How? Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 28, 13, 16. Genesis 28. Give me some time. Genesis 28, 13, 16. At the top of the stairs where stood the Lord. You all know this. Uh, can you go to verse 1 to 2? Genesis 28, verse 1 to 2. If you can do that, it will be nice. 
and you can come back to NSB. Uh, NSB. No, no, it's not one to two. Excuse me. Uh, go back to the first one I gave you. Uh, go to verse 11. Verse 11. Aha. He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun has set. And he took one of the stone of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. So I wanted to give you the context. This is Jacob running away from his brother. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible is so beautiful. It said he has arrived in a place because was sun, the sun has set. You see, there's a moment in your life where the sun set, where everything begins to become darkened. Confusion hit. You don't know if it should go left or it should go right. That's the sunset. Things are going down. Things are no longer clear as they used to be clear. It was the place where Jacob was. He was fearful. He was a fugitive running for his life. He was lonely. This was Mama's boy. He grew up at home. Now suddenly he had to escape like a refugee running for his own life. Leaving mom at home, dad at home, brother is chasing after him. It's the first time he experienced something like that, away from the family. It was a difficult moment for this young boy. But in the midst of that sunset, in the midst of that difficulty, he slept and God gave him a dream. So now we can go back to verse 13 or 14. And behold, the Lord stood above and said, now God is speaking to me in his dream. Can you imagine God speaking to you in the dream like that? And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and your descendant. This is dangerous. You are escaping. <laughs> Discouraged, lonely. Sun is going down, and this dream come. And the Lord said, don't look forever. Where you slept tonight, even where I'm speaking to you right now, that land, I'll give it to you and your descendant. Verse 14. And your descendant will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your descendants shall all the family of the earth be blessed. I guarantee you, hear me, brothers and sisters, you wake up from such a dream and no depression can remain. <laughs> you, you wake up from such a dream and your joy has come back. No matter how depressed you were, discouraged, downtrodden, pushed down, crushed, when you wake up from such a dream, and the voice of the Lord thunder to your spirit as you open your ear to put his instruction. And he said, my son. Hallelujah. He didn't mention anything about his condition. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes. He didn't say, oh, poor you. Look at the way you're sleeping alone and using it in a rock to be your pillow. You always slept in the kingside bed at home. You always eat mommy's too. You always have the embrace of mom and dad. Now you're on your own. I'm, I'm here to tell you I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's okay. Come, baby. Come, baby. I understand. You know, it's not your fault. No, no, he didn't say that. God, when he speak in a dream and he want to take you out of depression, he never mentioned anything about now. He always speak about your potential. In other words, no matter how dry the land is, you will not die here. You will be a possessor of lands. You are borrowing right now, but tomorrow they will line up to borrow from you. Am I speaking to somebody? Receive that with an amen. Dreams. Dreams are dangerous. The boy stood up and said, thank you, Lord, you were here and I didn't know about it. I gave you one tithe. He became fire up, holy ghosted. Fear was uplifted. Oppression and anxiety was gone. Loneliness was gone. He began to see his future bright. People are depressed because they have no vision of the future. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like prophesying. If you, wherever you are today, you might be on the sunset 
When things don't go well for you, you might be turmoil and turning around wondering. But under this word, I prophesy that you will not borrow, but you will give to others in the name of Jesus. Genesis 37, 5 to 10. I want to go quick here. Genesis 37. Thank you, Jesus. 5 to 10. We're talking about the dreamers here. Jacob is a dreamer. Let's talk about Joseph now. Then Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. You know, never share your dream with non-dreamers. <laughs> If they are not from the community of dreamers, don't tell them dreams because they will not understand that language. They speak Russian. They don't speak dream. I'm speaking about people who speak the language that God speaks in this hour. Prophecy, dreams, and vision. Back up by his word. The standard, the ultimate. That's why he went and told non-dreamers. His brother didn't dream. The devil have took away their monitor. And they came to him and said, I had a dream. And they hated him. They hated him because they didn't have dreamed themselves. In the name of Jesus, you will dream. Amen. You will dream God dreams. Amen. You will dream divine dreams. You will dream destiny dreams. Amen. Imagine, imagine right now, every teenage boy and girl waking up from a dream, a destiny dream. A teenage boy and girl Waking up with a destiny dream. Yes. Knowing there will be the prominent minister of Canada down on the road. Hey! Jesus. Seeing themselves standing and everybody bowing to them. A little boy, 12 years old. A girl, 13, 12 years old. And they wake up and say, Mama, Daddy, I had a dream last night. What did you dream? You were bowing down to me. My brothers were buying down to me. My community was buying down to me. And I was elevated above everybody. From that day, you will never slap that boy the way you did before. <laughs> hey! Are you hearing me, somebody? You know you can fight a dreamer, but you cannot fight the dream. Hey! I tell you. I tell you. you know, you can fight a dreamer. And hate a dreamer. But his dream, no way. I say no way. Years ago, I saw myself standing on the pulpit like this. I was in the cleaning team, brothers and sisters. I never dreamed that I would be a preacher. I saw myself standing on the pulpit. And I saw one group of people here. One group of people here. One group of black folks and black folks, different tribe and languages. Some yellow people here, some Spanish people with brown people here, some white people here, and so on. They were in groups like this. And I was standing like the leader on the pulpit, and I'm looking at these different groups like this. And I woke up from my dream. And then I went back to dream the second day. There is a level in dream master where you can dream a scene for weeks. The second night, I had a dream again continuation, episode two. Then I see each person standing, a leader standing in front of each group. Are you hearing me? In front of each group. And these people were teaching and doing things. And I was standing here and I was wondering in my head, how come these people are teaching, some are loud, some are quiet, some are teachers, some are preachers, some move in their gifts, and then they, they are different nations and different stuff, and they don't bug one another. How come? What the heck is going on? And then I woke up. Day three, episode three, I went back to the dream master. Because when you hang around the dream master, it will draw you in the dream stream. This line never, never miss it. You, you miss it. When you hang around the dream master, it will draw you in the dream stream. And when you dream in the dream stream, you will hang around the king of dreams. Then you will begin to do like Martin Luther King. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. Third night, I saw now no division. And God spoke to me clearly. That was the introduction of my apostolic ministry. 
And I knew in the dream, God never called me to build a church of 1,000 people. On the contrary, God called me to plant churches. That's what God was speaking to me in that dream. Churches with different type of folks, yet one house with many rooms. Amen. Are you hearing me? But I have to testify. I've been fought because of that. Some leaders who are not here were opposed to my, my, my style. Or were they opposed? Because they feel like, why are you releasing people? We should build a strong, powerful church with so many people. Yeah, now we are talking. I say, uh uh. When I was dreaming my dream, you were on the shore. Me, I was in the stream. Am I speaking to somebody? I know what God spoke to me. That's why I like we release people and plant churches. I don't calculate. Why? Because the dream king will provide for every stream that he creates. My son and daughter will build churches of 3,000 people. But me? No. I groom, I disciple, and I kick you out. You are going... And we don't care how many empty chairs, God will fill it out. How many people do we release here? Is this church not full today? Why? Because we are obedient to the vision. You can fight the visionary. You can fight the dreamer, but you cannot fight the dream. Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. Be careful. Whenever God gives you a dream, people will fight you with good heart. Because they won't get it. They were not there when you dreamed this dream. They were not there when God gave you the assignment. The day I change and I want, we keep everybody in this house and build a multi-church, whatever, mega church, that the day the anointing will be uplifted from this house. Because it's not my portion. Maragadagaya lagadaya. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't let anybody hijack your dream. Don't let the secular philosophy and what the market is saying hijack your dream. If God tells you in a dream to plant in the desert, plant in the desert, and you will reap. This is the only time when I get dangerously angry. Don't let anybody steal your dream. Some of you, God has called you to go plant churches one day in your village. You're sitting here eating burger. Okay. You just stay here eating burger. I challenge you today. Remove the dust. From your dream. Begin to take it serious. And God will take you serious. If you despise it, God will despise you. Because when you despise the thought of God, you are despising God. Hallelujah. David knew there was no way he would die in the pit. You remember uh, uh, Joseph? You remember when they put Joseph in the pit? No way, no way. Why? It's called the dream that sustains. That's another chapter in the curriculum. Not every dream sustains. Joseph has many dreams that the Bible doesn't mention. Or oh, how do you know? Because when you jump in the stream of dreamings, you become a dreamer. I know some of you won't catch it, but you will hear me say about it often. You will catch it one day. It's like when you begin to flow in the stream of prophecy, you become prophetic. When you flow in the stream of worship, you become a worshiper. The stream that wet you is from that stream you will operate. Ladies and gentlemen, don't try to swim in the stream of somebody. You will drown. You will drown. Okay. 
Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Are you hearing the voice of God? Yes. I will just stop here. I say to the Lord, there is a key for every situation. There is a solution for every situation. God knows them all and he can reveal it to us. Amen. Years ago, I had a dream and God said, I will make your dad a believer. I'm going somewhere. And he told me, there is this person you will make a believer too. So I call him. I said, you know, do you have $10,000? He said, do you need money? I said, no. He said, but why you want $10,000? I said, because in 21 days, I will bring you back $30,000. <laughs> he said, huh? I said, but I don't have the money. That's why I want to be a blessing to you because me, I don't have that seed. So he sent me $10,000, but really believing that I need help, so he's helping me out. My son is lying to me, so I will just help, help him out. In the dream, I saw a stock, those three letters always, representing the company. So I put the money in there. Not my money, his money. In 21 days, I brought him 30000 And me, zero dollar. But him, 30000 In the period where my son was hit, I had dream about stock markets. But I was so confused and taken by my situation in the natural, I didn't care. Yesterday, I kneeled and I said, Father, can you remind me again? <laughs> can you please, can you please remind me, what was it again? Really, seriously. There is a billionaire sitting here. Oh, yeah, yeah, now hear me. I'm just being real to you. And you won't get this billion by your own sweat. Mm -mm. There is just a place where you can put just an amount. And in a few years, it can turn into that much. Do you see Microsoft? There is a feature on Microsoft that does animation. That animation was given to a friend of mine at Polytechnic when I was at the engineering school in Montreal. And he was in the developing stage. And he was asking people to give 10,000 so he can do his thing. We laugh. We laugh about this guy. 10,000, you want to rip us up? Everyone will put 10 grand. After three years, they all became millionaires. Because Microsoft bought it. It's called Soft Image. If you heard that, Soft Image was developed by my friend. They bought Soft Image, and the guy, everybody who put 10 grand was now not working with 10 grand, but 10 million in their pocket in three years. Somebody said, I like that. Yeah. And it can happen to you. Yeah. If, if you hang around me, you'll get crazy. Because, you see, now every time I don't see or I don't know, and Google can help me, and my dad can help me, and my leaders can help me, and no human being can help me, you know what I do? I go and say, God, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I'm tired. I've been working too hard. I want to go on a nap. Are you hearing me, somebody? I feel like, God, I've been running too much. I want to go on a vacation. I, want to, I need a nap. I need a nap. Somebody said, take, take a nap. Don't do that work. You will lose your job. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I'll give you one testimony where I missed the mark. 
In 2006, we we're about to release our first leaders in this church, pastors and elders. I went with my family and my son. We, we get uh, Pastor Joe's uh, trailer, and we went to BC, all right, have a couple nights sleep there. And the first night in the trailer with my son was not easy. It was difficult. So when the second night began to happen, I was thinking about that night. I said, oh, my God, another second night. Eh, what's going to happen? And I hold my son and we're walking, and suddenly I heard the voice of the Lord that said, pack the trailer, go to Panorama. There's a city there. There is an hotel. I will speak to you there. Clear! So I told my wife, okay, we are moving out. She, she was not shocked because I'm the most spontaneous person on planet Earth. So I, I freak her so much in the beginning of our marriage, now she's used to me. Because we can sit down and I said, let's go to Edmonton now, from nowhere. So she packed the stuff and we run there. When we entered the parking, I told my wife, this is where God will speak to me. So I got there. I then slept that day on the floor with my son. And in my night's dream, I saw a man that I know. This man is an angel. And few times he came and he speak to me in my dream, dressed in white with a beautiful beard, like a human being. He doesn't have wings. I don't know him in the natural, but I've seen him often in my dreams. And he came with such a glory. And he said, okay, here is the list of the leaders for the starting of the work that God has called you to do in your lifetime. Right here. And I saw the names. Pastor Soso, Elder Soso, Pastor Soso, Elder Soso, Pastor Soso, Elder Soso. Clear! I woke up, I said, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. And then I told my wife, here is the name. She said, where do you get that? I said, my angel visitor who always talked to me, he came to visit and he gave me this very clearly. I woke up and I wrote down just exactly where I saw it, in the number and the order. Then I told my wife, but it doesn't make sense. There is this couple. You know how much we are close. And they are so amazing. And they are so phenomenal. I mean, the guy is integral. The guy is steady. The guy is anointed. The guy is just faithful. The guy, uh -huh. I begin to give the list of all the, the credentials a human being can give to another one. And I said, I will add him on the list. And my wife said, mm, you should stick to what? Your angel friend told you. I said, I said, but God doesn't show everything in a dream anyway. I tell you, I won't go into details. But that was one of the biggest mistakes I made in this church. Because I did not yield to the exact thing of what God says. When God speaks specific, why do you need to add your heart to it? Listen, we can lead this church by not dreaming. I'm telling you the truth. Before I left on my sabbatical, I told Pastor GB and Jenny, this one, this one, this one will leave the church. When the time comes for them to leave, just pray and let them go. Or do you know? I said it will happen in two weeks. In a matter of days, they call them to meet. In two weeks, gone. We don't lead blinded. If a leader does not operate in that realm, he will suffer. I speak about a subject I know. This one, I understand it like Joseph. You must refuse to be a victim of life. That your spiritual monitor can function properly. Oh, you know, pastor, pray for me. I don't know if I should marry number one or number two or number three. Or should I take this job or the other job? Which city I should leave? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, you know, we are confused totally. 
we have no direction, no guidance. We rely on counselors. Pray and sleep. That's right. I say pray. Yes. And what? Pray, pray and I say, God, the vision of this church is so big, sometimes I'm even scared to express it because it takes so much money to do this thing. Too much money. I'm not talking about thousands. I'm talking about millions. It takes millions and millions, not less than 100 millions. Do you think your tithe and offering will make us do that? And some of you, you don't tithe and offer. God will speak to you. Are you hearing me? Yes. That mentality of your takers, takers, no contribution. It's a curse. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's why you keep having those pizza dreams. <laughs> You're dreaming about money, money, but that's a demonic dream. Because you just keep money, you don't give tithe. What is that? You don't tithe. You don't tithe. You want to have a dream to be rich? You can't even tithe on $500. You're going to tithe on $1 million? No, talk to me. I'm talking about the dream master that fear the Lord. That swim in the stream of the prophetic. In the stream of dreams and resources. Not unspiritual, rebellious, stubborn, stingy people. God gave you a dream. Listen to me. Years ago, I gave all that I could to God and to my church. I don't take back, give. My pastors take care of them. You know this pastor here sitting here? Bless them sometime. Okay. You don't get it. One day, this is my dear son in woman. Well, please. Pastor Sabit, stand up. I told you guys about this man. You don't know me. You don't know him. Draw from him. Of my life, the first time, God spoke to me audibly five times in my life. Two of those five times was about this man. The first time was, and him. He will raise the dead. I was jealous. I said, what about me? <laughs> no raising dead. He has a gift of faith that is still dormant. But I believe, and I'm going to tell you when God will wake up, on the Friday of the opening of this uh, anniversary, is it the 13th or the 14th? 13th? 13th? Friday the 13th, I'm going to announce something here. We're going to have impartation and awakening of the gift of the seer. It was prophesied. Prophetess Martha will testify and prophet Okema. Before the enemy get here, we'll see him from far. We need to clean our lenses. You know this man? He walked with us. Every time he will stop giving tithe, <laughs> when we're still kids, grooming in the Lord, my wife will dream about it. Pastor Sebit is not giving, uh, Sebit is, was not pastor. Sebit is not giving tithe again. I say, oh, he said, because I saw everybody come and put the tithe in the basket and he was sitting watching. So we'll call him and say, Sebe, last month you didn't give tithe. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you know? God tell me. I'm so sorry. That's his heart. And then he will begin to give his tithe. One day he show up to my red apartment. We were going through some very struggling moments. I didn't have money to pay the rent. And I didn't want to ask my dad. If not, he will say that your Jesus is not providing. So I'd rather suffer in silence on my own. I'm explaining to somebody. Suddenly he showed up at my apartment. You may sit down. And he, he rang. It was at uh, 10 o'clock p.m. I have to pay this bill before midnight. Oh. He showed up like that. He entered sweating. And he had a check. And he said, this is your check, this is your check. Please, take your check quickly. I said, what's going on? He said, you know, one night he's a dream master too. He said, one night, God spoke to me and to give you this money. And I said, Elijah? No way. The guy's loaded. 
The guy is too rich. Look at ah, Elijah. Oh my God. Elijah. Oh my God. No. The second night, God came to scare him a little bit. I say you need to give this money. He woke up and said, no, that cannot be God. Elijah doesn't need money. This guy is rich. This guy has it. You know, the natural always lie to you. The third night, he couldn't sleep. The fourth night, he was afraid to go to bed without giving me this money. He ran back and he gave me, true or not true? True or not true? He gave me the money. I let him keep talking to my wife and I ran to the bank. RBC, just on Center Street. <laughs> hey! Are you hearing me, somebody? There is a God in heaven who will speak on your behalf in a dream to somebody. There is an honor somebody is withholding. Tonight, God is going to intervene on your behalf. <laughs> you are holding the blessing of somebody. Give it to him in Jesus' name. Amen. I can talk about dream without ceasing. But announcement quickly before I begin to pray. You don't want to miss this. This is a major. If you're in this church, don't miss it, please. Announcement quickly. Put my announcement for me. Thank you, Jesus. I told you I didn't know where to start and how to start. So we have our anniversary coming. This couple there, they are from Congo. Very prophetic gentleman and his wife. They are my friends, so I bring them here myself. I bring them in. Good people. Number, uh, the next one, please. The next one that's interesting. me. Dream and vision what? Okay, three days prayer and fasting so we can clean our spiritual monitors. Yes. Huh? Three days or what? Prayer and fasting. We start when? October the 10th. I think that's a Wednesday, is it? Yes. So, on October the 10th, Wednesday, we will meet here. In fact, I had put... Uh, no, uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about dream contaminations. This one, I wanted to do on a Sunday, but time won't allow me. So I, I just jump it up there. We do that in the prayer and fasting. Dream contaminations. I will share with you the thing that contaminate your dreams so we can clear it out. Amen? And, take it, and you will be shocked to hear certain things. Don't think about just sin, all right? Because everybody thinks, oh, if you're in sin, it will contaminate. Yeah, that's one of them, but there are many you don't know. And I will share those ones with you on that Wednesday, and we will pray, clear it out. Don't miss it, please. And then Thursday, pray at your house with your friends. Friday the 12th now, during front line, I will believe God for the seer's anointing, impartation, and activation. You see, there's a difference between a prophet and a seer. Every seer is a prophet. Not every prophet is a seer. All right? God said in Isaiah, when he was not happy with the prophet and the seers, he said, and to your prophet, I will close the eyes. But your seers, I shall close the head. When you close the eyes of a prophet, it's done. No more prophecy. It doesn't see anymore. But if you close the eyes of a seer, it will still discern you. Because the discernment of the seer is the head. The ears, the nose, the sensing. So you close one sense, it will still catch you up. Jacob was a seer. Samuel was a seer. Prophet, but seer. That's why Jacob, even though he was blind, will cross his hand and bless Ephraim and Manasseh. Because of a seer anointing. Where we are in this season, God spoke to me. He said, activate the gift of seers in my people. So they begin to know, to understand, and to hear clearly. So we can have the upper hand and catapult our life in this generation like we've never done it before. So you will begin to know things you didn't know. Those are portions of the school of the prophets. But... I'm sharing them with you. So please take this note. I invite some people if you have to. But this one here will be intense. I'm going to tell you how intense it's going to be. I leave it already. In other words, what I just told you Friday, what's going to happen that day, I have seen it already. All right? So I, I, I saw it, and then I came back, and we're going to relieve it again. Uh, that's what 
where the power is. Wow. It's when you know before it happened. So now, you just play. It's like a replay. A replay. Somebody say replay. replay. Can you imagine going and put your resume in the company, applying to be a manager because you've seen you were higher already in that position in the night time? How can you dare being afraid after that? No, no way. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, I'm excited in my spirit. Too bad I'm too busy this afternoon. If not, I was going for a nap. <laughs> but tonight we will see. Don't think this is a joke. This is serious. Don't miss your time on days of visitation. Today I will pray just a simple basic prayer. But first, before I pray, I want to let you know. If there is anyone here, you have nightmares in your dream, number one. So everybody understand? Nightmares in your dream, number one. Number two, you never remember your dreams. Right? This one, number three, I'll have to explain it, all right? The devil is so strategic. Sometimes you have a God dream. If you don't wake up to write down the God dream, the devil will throw 20 dreams at you to confuse you. So you forget the God dream. <laughs> we, we'll cover all those stuff in details. So number one, you never dreams. Number two, you never remember your dreams. Number three, you have a lot of dream until you remember none. It's like, bah, 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 bah. it's bombarding you. So did you hear that three things I said? Okay, if it's you, come in the front. I never dream. Or I dream I don't remember. Or I have too many dreams until I'm confused. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. I never dream. Or I dream I don't remember. Or I dream so many dreams at the end. It's like no dreams. Confusion. Thank you, Jesus. Today it's all going to cease and change. That's why I preach this word. And we're going to keep pushing in that dimension. Because the goal God put in my heart by that Friday on the 13th, or the, the 13th, the 12th, the, 12, the Friday, the 12th, we're going to swim in the river, in the stream of dreams and visions and revelation. It is the language of the last days of God to his people. Close your eyes. A fourth group that the Holy Spirit just put in my heart. If you're here, you do dream, but sometimes you feel like it's just a dream. You just throw it aside, it's just a dream. It's you I'm talking to, just come. You dream, but you don't take it serious. You don't honor your dreams. You, it is just a dream. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Come closer to the altar. Come closer. I want you to be separated completely from the crowd. And there is a reason for that. I dream, but I just feel like sometimes it's just a dream. Really, just a dream. Come closer. Come closer. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. name of Jesus. Joseph dreamed dreams. Joseph dreamed destiny dreams. You instructed him that the days are coming 
where you will raise him up in the place of authority and rulership he will be the redeemer of his people to bring an end to a family that had devastated the land for so long in your faithfulness the dream giver the dream fulfiller the dream sustainer and to daniel he dreamed a dream he dreamed the dream of the kings He dreamed the interpretation of the dream of the king. You the dream giver. The dream interpreter. And to Abimelech you gave him a dream. To keep his life from the grave. Do not touch this woman. You gave him the truth to reverse the lie that Abraham gave. And you saved his life. Today, under this word that has been spoken, in this atmosphere and this river and stream that you are building in this house, I take authority against every dream interference from the demonic realm i cancel every wave from the demonic realm i cancel every whisper every noise every voice every disturbance every annoying waves i cancel in your name jesus every dust every jam traffic jam i cancel i destroy i annihilate in the name of jesus let the darkness the cloud of darkness that have been blinding you that have been crushing you be uplifted today in the name of Jesus Amen. I command every strange voice to be silenced Amen. that the voice of the Lord may be clear to you Amen. even from now you will hear the instruction in the night vision you will hear the instruction in the dream you will hear the guidance and the wisdom in the dream in the name of Jesus I redeem every spiritual monitor from the hand of the enemy I clean every channel of dream communication I clear them I clear them from unbelief I clear them from despising. I clear them from the lie of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, let it rain. Let it rain upon your people, refreshing them, clearing, clearing, clearing the channels, clearing the dream channels, clearing the vision channel, clearing your voice channel to them in the name of Jesus. Somebody is looking for a secret. Somebody is looking for a key. Somebody is looking for a wisdom. Somebody is looking for guidance. Let it be granted to them today in Jesus mighty name. You will hear. You will know. You will say Thank you Father. for divine ideas thank you father for divine whispers 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Pour out your anointing upon them today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the seer see. Let the dreamer dream. Let the visionary envision. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Welcome to the company of dreamers. Welcome to the company of visionaries. Welcome to the company of seers. Welcome. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Give a great amen to the Lord. Amen. Say Father. Father. In Jesus name. In my sleep, I shall hear your voice. From today, I will be a good steward to honor you and to honor your dreams and your messages. In the name of Jesus, I declare through that, I will have the upper hand in my generation. I will no longer be a victim but I will be a giver of wisdom in Jesus name in Jesus name I will sleep with a paper and a pen by my bedside that I may honor your instruction thank you in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I would like you to give a hug to anybody and say, Welcome to the company of dreamers. Everybody, give a hug. May the Lord bless you. You may be released. Welcome to the company of dreamers. Welcome to the company of dreamers. Welcome to the company of dreamers. Ayangala mandegere bagayasha. Ondo sekete kete ya bagash. Welcome to the company of dreamers. Thank you, Jesus.